Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll get started here in just a couple minutes. Um, feel free to, uh, if you would like, uh, to utilize the, the chat to introduce yourself. Um, and yeah, we'll get started here in just a second. I've gone ahead and enabled the chat. So everyone should be good to go. And we'll give everyone one more minute to join. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, welcome to the first webinar for Cincinnati Gives 2022. My name is Lisa. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I'm really excited to kick off this year's event with you guys. Um, so just for today, things that we're going to be covering on this webinar, um, we're going to be going over just some general fundraising challenge basics about the overall challenge, getting started on the platform, things that if you are a returning nonprofit, um, things just reminders. Um, and things that you can utilize as you're preparing for your campaign. We'll also go over the leaderboard and prizes and rules this year. And then at the end, we'll uh, save everything for questions and answers. Um, you can feel free to use, utilize the chat or the questions and answers tool in um, the Zoom panel. And then this uh, training is going to be recorded so you can, um, we'll have access to this later. I'm going to pass this over to Ivy at the Cincinnati Magazine, and she'll be able to cover some of the basics about the challenge. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, everyone. Um, Ivy here with Cincinnati Magazine. We are so thrilled to be back again for the seventh annual Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Um, as many of you know, we started in 2016, and to date we have raised over $1.78 million for organizations just like you. So I am absolutely thrilled to have you join this um, webinar because it really shows you're committed to making the most out of the challenge. And uh, Lisa and Ellen and Don and the entire Mighty Cause team are such a resource. So I just encourage you to. Um, check out all the resources and the, the toolkits on the Cincinnati Gift site, as well as reach out to myself or the Mighty Cause team at any time if you have questions as you move along. Um, but as you know, um, the Cincinnati Gives Challenge is really, or the campaign is really two parts. It's our annual guide to giving and it is the Cincinnati Gives Challenge. And, um, you do not need to participate in our annual publication if you don't want to or can't afford to. Um, everyone is welcome to participate in the challenge as long as they are a 501c3. But we obviously encourage everyone who's able to, to participate in the publication because it is a phenomenal way to share your mission and tell your story to our readers. So just a reminder, the Guide to Giving comes out the very end of November, right before Thanksgiving. It goes to all of our subscribers with our December issue, actually, which comes out um, at that Thanksgiving time. And it's really a great way for you to um, promote yourself right before the challenge begins. But it's also a resource that we know our readers use uh, throughout the year. So um, Lisa, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, we've incorporated a ton of benefits with the guide to giving. So the advertising opportunity for you, if you decide you'd like to go ahead and participate, um, has the rate has stayed the same since we started in 2016, and that rate is 3,700. 
And what that includes is the full page spread that you see uh, cancer free kids is the example we're showing here. And as you can see, it includes a full page profile on the left hand page and then a full page ad on the right. We um, will work with you to create the profile. We send you a really simple form that you fill out. Uh, it's all digital. You fill it out, uh, send us some photos, and it will include things like your mission, key services, ways that our readers can get involved with your organization, ways you need help, um, obviously leadership information, board of directors, uh, contact information and we pair it with a full page ad that runs opposite. If you are participating in the challenge, and I hope you do, um, and you do the guide to giving, you get a ton of additional Oh, I think Ivy, your connection, maybe, uh, I'm not sure if we can hear you. Would someone be able in the chat? Um, let me know if you hear Ivy or if she's also disconnected for you. Okay. All right. I think she's going to try to come back on in a second. We'll uh, give her another um, second and she'll be able to finish talking about uh, the opportunity with the guide to giving and then we'll start going over some challenge basics. All right, so we'll just uh, continue and then if she comes back on, she'll be able to finish up talking about the guide to giving. All right, so uh, as Ivy uh, talked about a little bit, um, the overall challenge is 10 days long. Um, it starts on November 28th at 5 p.m. So the key thing to know, uh, Oops, I think Ivy's actually back on, so I'm just gonna go back. Oh, I'm not sure if we can hear you. All right, so. I will we'll, uh, just continue with uh, the challenge basics. And Ivy, you can let us know when your audio has been updated. Um, so it will start at 5 p.m. Oh, you there. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am so sorry. It's uh, all good. We lost our, <laughs> we lost our um, our internet connection at work, so I'm calling on my phone. I promise we won't lose internet connection during the challenge. I promise, promise. <laughs> um, I apologize for that. Where was I when you guys were uh, unable to hear me? I think you're still talking about the guide to giving. Okay. Um, I specifically wanted to talk about all the benefits that you receive um, tied to the challenge. So uh, I think that the couple biggest ones, if you are in the guide to giving, your direct URL to your challenge page will be included on the bottom of your profile. Um, so that's a direct way to send people right to your page. Also, we obviously um, at Cincinnati Magazine do our very best to scream it from the rooftops that the challenge is happening and we uh, drive as much traffic as we possibly can to the Cincinnati Gives site. 
And part of that is through a pretty aggressive social media campaign. And as a guide to giving advertiser, uh, at least one of our social media posts will be a dedicated and boosted post about your organization specifically with a direct link to your challenge page. And last but not least, least uh, Lisa will get into this later on in the presentation about our bonus challenges, but we have a specific bonus challenge and earmarked prize money just for those that participate in the publication. So there's extra opportunity for you. So we've really um, tried to beef up the benefits over the years to make it um, as valuable as possible for you as an organization. Um, in addition, you do get a bonus full page ad that you can run at any time next year in Cincinnati Magazine. So this is really great if you have um, a specific event or other campaign during the year that you want to promote to our audience, you can pick when you'd like to run that. So I do encourage you if you have any questions about the publication, the deadline technically is today, but we are not laying it out until next Wednesday. So you still have a little bit of time, um, but I'd be happy to chat with you one-on-one -on -one if you have questions or concerns about being a part of the publication, um, questions about artwork, anything like that, I would be happy to, to answer that. So um, I just wanted to share that. Again, I'm sorry my internet dropped out, um, but I want to turn it over to Lisa now because I know um, the focus of today's webinar is really on getting started with the challenge. So I will turn it over to you, Lisa, so you can uh, continue on. Thanks, Ivan. I'm glad you were able to get back connected with us. Uh, Thanks. So, yes, as we were um, talking about the overall challenge, um, I think the key thing to remember is it, it is a 10 day challenge, but it starts and ends at 5 p.m. So you just want to make sure you um, set those um, times in, on your calendar um, that that's when donations can um, start getting collected and that's when it will end. So anything before or after those times and dates will not count towards the challenge. Um, Ivy spoke a little bit about the guide to giving and um, that component of the challenge. And we'll also be going over all of the prizes that are, are available and there's um, over $36,000 in prize money available to participating nonprofits this year. So uh, for those of you that are brand new to Cincinnati Gives who may not have participated, participated previously, um, overall a fundraising challenge like Cincinnati Gives is an opportunity to compete or you can also in a different way collaborate with other nonprofit organizations to win prizes leader um, with leaderboards and bonus challenges. Um, the collaboration comes in the ability to spread awareness for your community and as well as um, you know your overall mission and work for your specific organization. Um, it's an opportunity to shine a light on Cincinnati organizations and all that you guys do in the community. So in order to participate for Cincinnati Gives, if you haven't done so, you want to make sure that you do register. If you have participated last year, you do have to re-register again this year. So you want to make sure you go ahead and complete the registration form. And then next, which we'll be getting into, is you want to um, start building or customizing or updating your organization page on the platform. Um, after your page is complete, um, you'll want to get into the um, planning out what exact fundraising campaign you want to create and how you want to promote on social and as well invite your support network onto your page to help raise your organization funds, which we'll all talk about today and as well as the next webinar. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, um, you want to make sure that you do register your nonprofit. It is a easy and quick form to fill out. So really relatively painless to complete. Um, once you're approved, you will receive an approval email. So you will know the status of your organization as well on the overview section of your organization page you will uh, see the status of your organization, whether you're pending, whether you haven't registered yet, or whether you're approved. Um, so if you have any questions about what your status is, um, you can always check there as well. So um, as a 
kind of reminder and introduction to the platform for new organizations or returning organizations. Um, a little bit just about the dashboard and where you can find information um, on your dashboard for your organization. So first things first, um, to see your dashboard, you do have to be logged in as an administrator. So if you are on your organization page and you don't see a dashboard, you wanna make sure that you are logged in with the right email address, that you're logged in with an email address that is set up to be an administrator. Once you're logged in, you will see your dashboard on the left-hand side, and it's broken down into some key sections. So one being your overview. So that's just going to tell you your registration status. It's going to also share with you your to-do list, and it will have any key announcements um, about Cincinnati Gives, and as well, um, it'll just give you key metrics, just a quick glance into the last 30 days related to your organization. Your organization page is where you're gonna be able to actually edit your page and make any updates that you want to the content language, the images, et cetera. Fundraising tools will provide you all of the um, tools that you need to build additional like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, add matching grants, et cetera. Reports will have access to all of your donation reporting. Checkout will allow you to customize your checkout flow. So your thank you page, your donation form, and your uh, donation receipt. And then settings is where you can add and remove administrators. Uh, you can also update your uh, social card for um, links for Facebook and Twitter, et cetera. So we'll get into all of those sec uh, sections in a second. So for brand new nonprofits, um, customizing your organization page is probably going to be one of the most important things that you do for this year's event. For returning organizations, it's really important to revisit your page um, and make sure that it is telling that the story that you wanted to tell this year. How has your nonprofit changed this year? Um, what is your overall theme for this year's campaign? What is your overall goal for this year? what images you want to change or replace, because this is going to be the main place that donors come to make their donation. So it's really important that it's updated and matches your branding and it has, um, you know, the language and content that you want on it. So at the top, um, you can edit your banner image by selecting um, the edit banner image tool, um, or you can utilize the quick edit tool at the very top. And you can also add um, your uh, organization's theme color so that it's uh, that color is shown throughout your page. Um, the banner image is 16 to 3 ratio, so it is rectangular. And one thing to know about the platform is that it is mobile responsive. So what does that mean? That means that depending on the size of the device that's looking at the page, the image will change. So um, if it's on a smaller device like an iPhone, um, the image will, will shrink to fit those dimensions. If it's on a huge desktop monitor, it's going to widen to fit those dimensions. So we typically for the banner image recommend not using a banner that includes text because it may be cropped or may display differently depending on the size of the device using it. Um, but it is um, rectangular. You can also just get a crop of an image if you want to and you can um, add an overlay as well if you want to for your banner image. So at the bottom um, below your uh, banner image and your logo, you'll see the ability to um, update or add, um, change your page metrics and your goal. So your page metrics is the date that donations are being calculated from. So you just wanna double check this section so that it's set to the correct date, which is it should be November 28th at 5 p.m. So that any donations starting November 20th at 5 p.m., that's when they're going to start calculating and you're not including any donations from last year or from previous years. As well, in this section, you can also update your goal and your needs. So if you do have a new goal, you can add that goal in. Um, and based off the date that you set for your metrics, it will update that percentage automatically. So as you start receiving donations, that percentage and that thermometer will update live. Um, so I spoke a little bit about, you know, making sure that your page is up to date, 
and sharing the content that you want this year about your organization. And you can do so in the about section of your organization page. And so this is right underneath that goal and that thermometer and your metrics. So the inline text editor has the ability for you to add photos as well as embed a video um, and add any you know, additional text that you want on your page. Um, there is a custom tab. So if there's additional information that you wanna share, so for example, if you are planning on having live events or you want to have a volunteer shout out section, whatever that may be, you do have a section, another tab that you can utilize if you want to. Um, so as you are editing this a section, you just wanna make sure that you are clicking save that so that you are saving the work that you're doing as you are editing um, this area. And as I mentioned, if you're a returning nonprofit, wanna make sure that you're just rereading that language if there's any stats or anything that needs to be updated that you're doing so. Below your about section, um, this is where you can add visually the representation for your organization through your media gallery, as well as the ability to connect to Facebook and your Instagram gallery. So the media gallery, um, simply you would embed from your computer, or I'm sorry, add images from your computer, Dropbox or Google Drive, et cetera. So this is a curated gallery that you can add images uh, and if you do want to connect with Facebook and Instagram, you can do so um, through uh, the Facebook gallery and Instagram gallery sections. Um, when you're doing that, you just want to make sure that you are the browser that you're utilizing is um, already logged into the right accounts that are tied to your organization, Instagram and Facebook accounts. Um, sometimes browsers can auto save your personal login. And so you may, if you're having trouble um, adding your gallery, um, you may want to try a new browser, making sure that you're logged out of your personal one on your browser and logging into the right one. All right, so um, as I mentioned, uh, the report section of your dashboard is where you're going to find all of your donation information, all of your donor data. Um, so as an administrator, you will receive email notifications for every donation that is made. Um, if for some reason you are not receiving email notifications. First things first is you want to check your user account settings to make sure that you have enabled email notifications. Um, if you are still not receiving it, you want to make sure that you're also um, checking your email network and system. There are some um, email networks that may block emails from us or it may just be going into spam, but you should be receiving email notifications when donations are made. So within reports, um, donations is where you can find all of your donor data. Um, so online, you'll be able to see the donor's name, their email address, the date of the donation and their amount, and as well as if it's tied to a specific campaign or not. Uh, if you are looking for additional donor information, uh, you can download the report and you'll get a detailed report that will tell you, you know, if they cover fees, um, their address information, et cetera. As well, disbursements um, within your report section um, will provide you a breakdown of all of the disbursements that have been made to your organization. Um, by clicking on a specific disbursement, you can see a breakdown of that disbursement. So you can you know, review the actual uh, calculation of how that net came to be. So you can always reconcile your deposits. And as well, when disbursements are made to your organization, you will receive an email notification, but you can always come back to this section to review these disbursement breakdowns. So for returning nonprofits, um, one uh, report that will be really useful for you this year is your donation, donor retention report. For new nonprofits, this is something that you can utilize next year um, when you're participating in Cincinnati, again, a gives next year. Um, so your donor retention report is going to give you a snapshot of all of the donors that your organization has not yet or has retained this year. So it's a really great resource um, if you are starting the challenge and you want to see, okay, so far, how many donors have not given to our organization this year um, that donated last year? And that's an easy list of people, then you can immediately download 
Um, you can export that contact list and immediately communicate to those donors, um, sharing, you know, hey, you donated last year, here's how you can support our organization again, et cetera. Um, so with this report, as I mentioned, you can choose whether you just wanna see all of, you know, your retained and not retained donors or just your non-retained donors, and you can download that contact list. One thing to note about this is that it does go by email address. Um, so if a donor uses a different email address than they did last year, then it's not going to really, uh, it's not going to recognize that it's to, to the same donor. All right, so as you are editing the overall content on your page, you are making sure that's all up to date. You also want to make sure that you are reviewing the overall checkout flow of your donation form. So this can be done in the checkout section under don donation form. And this is where you can see um, the ability to edit donation levels or add donation descriptions. Adding donation descriptions is a really great way, great way to reinforce your impact. You know, for example, saying $10, you know, provides a backpack to a student is much more powerful than just saying, you know, support us for $10. So this gives you the opportunity to add more donation levels or to add descriptions. And it also has the opportunity for you to add a custom question if you would like. So if you want to ask, you know, are you interested in volunteering for our nonprofit, you can um, add that type of question and also make that a required question or an optional question on the donation form. If you're returning nonprofit, you do want to, I, I definitely encourage you to go back in, double check, you know, the donation levels, the descriptions, anything that you want to change within this area so that it's up to date for this year. So after a donation has been processed, after they've gone through your donation flow, they've clicked donate, it goes through success, um, a thank you page immediately pops up for that donor. Um, so they will see a thank you for donating um, page. And what you have the opportunity to do is edit that language that is shown to them. So your thank you page, which is also in your checkout, um, gives you an inline text editor. And you can add as well, embed a photo, a video, um, add a hyperlink or call to action if you want them to subscribe to a newsletter or go back to your website, et cetera. You can customize this section so that um, you, know, you are directly thanking the donor and sending them or showing them the content that you would want after their donation is processed. In addition to the, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, in addition to the thank you page, you also have your donation receipt. So your donation receipt provides you the ability to add thank you language on your receipt. So the receipt is automatically sent to the donor to the email address that they provided. So that is all automatic, all of that legal language, that's all automatic. You don't have to be worried about that. But if there's anything that you want include, included at the top of the email, any thank you language, um, in addition to that legal tax receipt information, um, you can do so through the donation receipt section. And it's while that section provides you the ability to send yourself a test receipt. And we always recommend sending yourself a test receipt just so that you see what it looks like and you have an idea of what the donor will receive as well. All right, so one of the things that you want to start thinking about, which we'll get into more into the next webinar, which goes into more about the strategies that you can utilize, um, is matching grants. Um, so if you do have a matching grant that you would like to enter onto the platform, um, that can be done through the fundraising tool section on your dashboard. Um, there are various different types of matching grants that you can enter. Once you are on your match manager, you simply click create in the top right, and then you will see the ability to add all that information about your matches. Um, so you'll add the how much the match is for, the uh, grantor, if they want to be anonymous, the title of the match, when you want it to start and end, 
and then as well, the type and any conditions associated to the match. As I mentioned, in the next webinar, we'll go through matching grants in more detail, but uh, there are several different types of matches, including, you know, you can have what's the most popular, which is a one-to-one -one match matching 100% for donation, or you can also have a different type of match, such as a cumulative threshold match, which is, um, you know, let's say you, the match is, if we get 50 donors, we will receive our match, or if we get 10 donations, we receive our match. So there's a lot of different types of matching grants that um, you can add onto the platform. Um, how the grantor chooses to fulfill that match is up to you and the grantor. However, um, offline donations do not count towards um, any leaderboards and prizes. So that is something to consider as you are thinking through your matching grants. And we'll get to the rules in a second. Okay, and the last section on your dashboard are your settings. So if there um, is any individual that has left your organization or has um, been added to your team, um, you can add them to your organization page by going to settings and clicking admins and then adding them as an administrator or removing them as an administrator if they're no longer there. So I definitely recommend going to your admin section, just making sure that that information is updated and that all the correct individuals that need to be administrators are so. Uh, within your organization info, this is where you can update your legal address and as well as um, your um, legal name if for any reason your name has been, uh, your legal name has been updated or changed. One thing to note is that the legal address and the legal name, um, that is something that is only shown in the back end. So if you have a DBA, but a different legal name, you don't have to change your legal name. Um, that again, that's only for the back end. Donors won't see your legal address, your legal mailing address or your, um, your legal name. They will only see the display name that you provided and as well as the display address that you've also provided on your organization page. Within your disbursement settings, you can add EFT or update EFT if you um, have new banking information. Um, when you add EFT information, um, it does go through a banking verification system automatically. Um, if it passes the banking verification system, um, you don't have to make, you know, don't have to do anything else and it will automatically tell you that it's approved. If for any reason our banking verification system can't verify your banking information, you'll be asked to add a void a check or a bank letter to confirm the banking information that you've provided. Our team will review that and then we'll approve it or ask for any further information. So it's a pretty seamless process and you'll always be updated or notified um, on what your EFT status is. Lastly, if there's any other settings that you need to utilize for your organization, for example, if you need to update your URL or you want to customize your social share, which refers to that uh, when you share a link on Facebook and there's an automatic text and image pops up, um, your image card, uh, if that's something that you need updated, those can all be found in general settings. Um, All right, so some things that um, you want to make sure to review uh, because they will be really helpful as you guys start getting started for uh, Cincinnati Gives is signing up for future trainings or uh, the next webinar that will happen for this event. This is also where um, we'll have this recording on the toolkit as well, but also you'll see FAQs, basic how-tos, so if there's any information um, that you're curious about, um, you can always just double check if the toolkit has an um, how-to on it. You'll also find um, templates for email and social media there and any logos or photos that you may need for your communications, for your marketing, for the event. So let's go over the prizes and rules for the event because there's a ton of prizes that are available. As we mentioned, it's a 10-day challenge. So 
for the grand prize that will um, account for any donations that are made through those 10 days. So again, starting at 5 p.m. and ending at 5 p.m. And first place will receive 10,000, second place receiving 6,000, third place receiving 4,000, fourth place receiving um, 1,500, and fifth place receiving $500. The bonus challenges, um, there are several different bonus challenges um, that we'll go through. So um, bonus challenge, the meet your match challenge is um, the $1,000, uh, this small organization um, challenge is $1,000, the profile organization bonus is $1,000, the greater Cincinnati bonus which is brand new is $1,500 and the Giving Tuesday bonus is $2,500. So for the, just to break down a little bit, um, some of these. So for the organization profile bonus, so organizations that purchase a profile in the 2022 Guide to Giving are eligible for this leaderboard. The eligible organization that raises the most during the entire challenge will win an extra thousand dollars. Um, so your purchase has to be done by um, October 5th. But again, um, you know, speak with Ivy if you are still interested in purchasing your guide to giving um, spot. For the Giving Tuesday bonus challenge, that is the organization that raises the most during actual Giving Tuesday. Um, and the greater Cincinnati Foundation bonus, organizations are eligible for this specific bonus if they are eligible for these specific, with these specific criteria. So one, organizations who are committed to reducing racial disparities to achieve equity, and organizations that are driving change with the strategic focus of affordable housing, economic mobility, and racial justice. Um, and edu eligible organizations that raise the most during the entire length of the challenge um, will then win um, the $1,500. All right, so just to go over then each of the bonus challenges, which will be broken down uh, depending on the day. So bonus challenge one, will be for December 1st and we'll start at midnight and end at 11.59.59. And it's going to be the two organizations that have the most unique donors on the first. So the key thing for that challenge is that it's the most unique donors on the first. Bonus challenge two will be December 2nd. And it'll be the two organizations that raise the most money online and also will win two tickets to Cincinnati Magazine's Saber event. Um, bonus challenge three will be December 3rd and it will be the two organizations with the most raised online from Friday, December 3rd through Monday, December 6th. And each will win $500 uh, plus a full page ad in uh, Cincinnati Magazine. And the two organizations uh, to, for bonus challenge four will be two organizations that raise the most online on December 7th will win $1,000. And then bonus challenge five will be on December 8th. And it'll be the organization to raise the most online they will win $500 and have $2,000 to spend in a digital ad spend on CincinnatiMagazine.com. And just some rules about the overall event. Um, so all organizations that are participating in this event must serve the Cincinnati area. And as well, they must be a 501c3 nonprofit. Participating organizations are eligible for one grand prize and two bonus challenges. So if you win two, two bonus challenges, you'll automatically be removed from winning any other bonus challenges. So that's the max for organizations that can win. Organizations cannot donate to themselves 
what that means is that you are more than welcome to make a personal donation to your own nonprofit. However, you cannot use your own nonprofit funds to make a donation to yourself. So um, if a you know, donor gives you a check and you want to make a donation to yourself, that is against the rules. For the grand prize, you must have at least 10 unique donors to be eligible for the grand prize. So you can't win by just having one donor make a large donation. And as I mentioned previously, offline donations do not count towards any prizes or leaderboards. So you are also more than welcome to enter offline gifts on your page if you want that included on your org page metrics so that your donors or your, you know, for your own reporting, you can keep it all in one place. But for overall prizes and leaderboards, offline donations won't be counted. So a couple of reminders uh, for everyone. Um, the Mighty Cause support team is available to help answer any questions that you may have. Um, so you can contact them at support at mightycause.com and we'll help you uh, guide you through the registration process or updating your page. The next webinar will be on Wednesday, October 19th at 1 p.m. Um, you can register for that webinar on Cincinnati Gives. And uh, as well, if you are unable to make it, a recording of that webinar will be posted on the site. Or if you want to email to you, you can still register and then that um, webinar will be um, sent out to you. So I'm going to leave the rest of the time for any questions anyone has. So feel free to use the chat or the Q&A tool. So registration will um, is currently open. So again, if you haven't um, registered your organization yet, you want to make sure that you do so um, as soon as possible and get that out of the way. It's a really easy and simple form to complete. Uh, so there's a question in the chat, does Cincinnati Magazine get access to our donor data? And if so, are they available to use that in any way? We want to make sure our donor data is secure. Um, I will pass that off to Ivy. Um, so in regards to Mighty Cause, the platform provider of um, Cincinnati Gives, um, we do not do anything with the donor data that uh, your organization collects that is just for you to utilize. Um, but I will let Ivy, I can pass that off question off to her and she'll be able to answer that question for you and I'll let um, her know so she can directly be in touch about Cincinnati Magazine and um, donor data. Uh, so there's a question about how do you find your giving page to make updates? Um, so if your email address is set up as an administrator for your organization, if you log into the platform, um, you with that email address, um, through the login menu, you should see the ability to go to your organization dashboard. Um, if you don't um, see that when you're logged in, um, you can, uh, if you have a link to your page from uh, last year, et cetera, you can go to your page and request um, admin access, and then we'll be able to approve you or you can reach out to support at mightycost.com and we can um, help give you access to your page. Um, but if you're set up as an administrator, all you need to do is log in and then go to your login menu and you'll see your organization name there and you can click that, it'll take you there. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping up. Um, so I will go ahead and end the webinar here if there are no other questions. So um, this webinar and the slide deck will be added to the toolkit on Cincinnati Gives. So if you do wanna reference it, you can always go back and um, download uh, the 
PDF or review this video. Um, and as I mentioned, please feel free to reach out to our support team. We're always here supporting nonprofits and especially during this crazy giving season, um, we wanna make sure that you guys are ready for the challenge. So please do reach out with any questions. Um, please let us know if um, we can do anything else and I hope you have a great day.